Hello and welcome to Clock Tower Game Studios. So today we're gonna to take a break from some of the hobby stuff a little bit to do a product review of some models I received recently from Bombshell Miniatures. So today we're gonna to be looking at uh, an order I had from them that included some of their Babes lines that they do kind of on an annual basis. They've done, I think, five or six runs of those now that are all different. Each one's an individual female model that all represent different genres, tropes in science fiction. Uh, there's a lot of the, uh, they do a lot of the um, pulp sci-fi stuff, like the old future retro, or retro futurism type vibe, which I really like. And that's what the uh, Counter Blast game that they do is all based on, is that um, retro futurism and sort of the pulp 50s, 60s sort of sci-fi look, which was really cool. So I've got a handful of those models here, uh, including some of the uh, GDF Galactic Defense Force from Counter Blast, as well as some of the General Babes. So I'm gonna pull up those models now. We're gonna take a look at them and then uh, we'll get into painting one of them. So Bombshell specializes in making, uh, in particular, female models, because they're sort of a rarity in the larger mini gaming community. They're hard to find some. And then they have their own game, Counter Blast, which is a pulp sci-fi skirmish game as well. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the GDF, Galactic Defense Force, from Counter Blast as well as some of the other models. So one of the things right off the top that I love most about these models is the majority of these especially have a very pulp sci-fi look to them. So they've got like the traditional like bubble helmets to go on their uh, semi-rigid suits. Uh, one thing to note as I'm taking a look at the uh, bubble helmets right now is there's two different sizes of them. There's a large size, which is of course for larger models. And then there's a small size that goes with smaller models. So let's just take a look at some of these. So I'm gonna separate them out into the actual GDF. And then the uh, Babes models will just be separate. So normally in the past, Bombshell has done both uh, are primarily plastic or uh, metal models. They do these kind of traditional old school white metal minis, which have really nice detail. But recently they've started getting into more resin casting and their resin is really cool. Um, so let's just take a look at some of these right off the top. So we've got a couple of GDF models. We have, I like her victory rolls. I really like this model. She's not armored. She's wearing, uh, looks like kind of the high cut back uh, jacket. Uh, looks like it has a, the front of her uniform has some weird butter button pattern that comes down the front. High boots, knee pads. Uh, she has some sort of a sci-fi blaster. And then like I said, the uh, victory rolls in particular, I think on that model are really cool and a nice throwback to the pulp era. Here we have a big uh, feline uh, hard suit model. I, I really like this model. I love that his tail is armored too, and you can see that it's articulated, which is really nice. There's a little flashing on these that's gonna need uh, kind of worked out, and there's some dings on the sword that I'm gonna have to kind of straighten out. But I like the detail on this model. He's got some nice belt pouches. Uh, you can really see the uh, headpiece, um, the helmet, like the interior helmet, includes caps for his ears, which is pretty cool. And then it's got the rebreather on the back of it. This is going to be a fun model to paint. I like that a lot. And then their lieutenant is uh, some sort of shark, uh, shark, humanoid shark guy. It's hard to see his face in there, I think, but. Once he's painted, you might be able to see a little better, but you can even see from the right angle, you can see his teeth. I like him a lot, and he'll be a neat alien to have in the mix. Again, attributing to the uh, pulp sci-fi of aliens being kind of humanoid with a different animal's head. I kind of like that. So on the resin model, I can see right away there's more flashing on it than what there is uh, on their metal models. 
it could be that they're still getting used to their uh, resin, so it's not that big of a deal. The level of detail, though, you can see is uh, really nice. It's a little sharper even than the metal models. It lends itself to finer detail a lot better, especially on her face. I like that a lot. This is a good direction they're going in. And then we've got a couple of the just uh, babes models. So she's in a uh, hard suit again. It comes in a couple parts with a little piece of sprue. Yeah, again, there's a little flashing under her arm, but this is one of their older sculpts, so that's not really surprising. This mold has probably taken some abuse. Same with this one. I like the armor she's got on. And then, of course, you can actually tell that these are supposed to be uh, automatic pistols. And here you've got uh, some of the just GDF generic crew. This is a female with some sort of assault weapon. Rebreather packs and the bubble helm. All right. So all in all, these metals look really good. But these are really cool models. Um, so next, I'm going to go ahead and bang out building a couple of these. Um, I'm just going to use the typical super glue. And yeah, I think I'm going to do probably these couple and see how fast I can turn them out. Um, my goal is, since these are going to be a force used for a roster in Seer, is they're going to have a matching paint scheme, and I'm going to use them in conjunction with a model I already own. I already have notes for how I'm going to paint them. So this isn't a super detailed paint job, but hopefully I can knock it out, and then maybe I'll go back later and touch up some of the character. All right, so these come with a kind of large, like inch and a quarter size base that's beveled on the edge. These look good and they're okay for displays and they're really fine for even for Seer for our game. But I play a lot of other games like uh, Pathfinder, Starfinder that use like a one inch grid, like what our uh, cutting mat here is. And so I want to make sure that my bases fit within that one inch grid. So. Since this doesn't, I'm going to start by cutting off the slotted tab. You can see that normally this just sits down in there. You'd glue it in place and it'd be fine. Well, I want to cut that off of there to make sure that uh, I can get it onto a normal 25 millimeter base. So I'm just going to lop that off real quick grab my hobby file, make sure it's one with a flat edge, and I'm just going to lightly go over those connection points and smooth them out because I want this to sit nice and flat on a 25 millimeter base like this. So once I've got that done, the next thing to do is I need to glue her weapon in place. So I've got her weapon. If I join it at the shoulder, it doesn't quite meet the wrist, but that's okay. These white metal models bend fairly easy and I know I want her posed where she's holding it across her body kind of like she is so I'm going to bend it at the wrist so it looks natural just give that a bend right there now being careful not to bend the actual handle of the weapon I'm also being careful not to bend her forearm so it doesn't look too messed up and then I'm just gonna get it to where I like it. So it's up a little high, so I need to rotate it. So I'm gonna grab that at the elbow and at the wrist and give it a twist. And just keep going until I get it exactly where I want it. Like so. So the next thing to do is just take our super glue because these are metal models, so you'll want to use super glue on them. Put just a little on there, a little on there. Now, I could paint these separately so I could access her body a little easier, but really for this, I just want to do kind of a quick paint job on these. So I'm just going to get 
get it on there like so. Now she's in a nice action pose and I'm gonna glue her to her base. I'm gonna use as little glue as possible for this so it sets up quickly. And there she'll sit and cure. And when we come back, I'll jump right into getting them painted. Now at this stage also, you'll know I'm not gluing the bubble helm in place. This way I can get to her face and her head and everything. Cause I wanna be able to paint the whole thing without worrying about uh, popping it apart or trying to get to that later. And I definitely want the bubble helmets on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue together another couple of these guys, clean them up and get them ready to paint. And then I'm gonna go outside and take care of that. All right, be back in a few. Okay. So I've got one of my base models ready, more or less. Um, I did find a piece of flash that was highlighted by the that was highlighted by the primer. So I'm gonna touch that up where I scraped it off with a bit of Abaddon Black. I'm just gonna use my brush right here. Just get out a little Abaddon Black. I'm going straight out of the pot for this cause this character isn't as important as some others. So I'm not really taking my time with this. I'm just trying to get the painting done fairly quickly. So I'm just gonna touch up a few spots where I noticed the primer's not great. All right, so now we've got that done. We're going to do the little bit of leather she has first, which is gonna be her leather helmet because as we all know, original pulp leather and metal. It's all old school pulp sci-fi. So we're just gonna go around her helmet under where the bubble helmet will cover. We're just gonna give her a nice coat, base coat of Mornfang Brown. We're gonna get underneath the brim of that as well. Make sure we go all the way into the recesses where we can. Cause we want this to stand out from the rest of the helmet. Make sure that there's no black showing through. There we go. So there's that. So that's all of that. We do need a little more black I noticed down around her collar. So we're just gonna get some of that off of our paper towel there and paint it down into the crevices so that it's nice and dark. Okay, so there is the leather part of the model. There's not much there. Next, we're gonna do the cloth bits around her arms and feet. So we're gonna use a different paint pot for the red because it's super thick and pigmented and will cause all kinds of issues. So there we're just getting that all done. And we're gonna start on her upper thighs and just do the red around her upper thighs. Don't worry if this isn't perfect. We're using some pretty opaque colors here. So touching this up should be pretty easy. So we're just gonna make sure we get all the way around here other the under the pouches. Actually, I think I may go back and do the pouches that same Mornfang leather, just so they stand out a little. There we go. So basically the entire undersuit, the jumpsuit 
that her armor goes over is going to be this red. All right, now for most of the metal bits, we're going to do Balthazar Gold, also from Citadel. And I'm going to use and I'm going to use a different pot for my metallics because metallics can be really gnarly. That's going to need watered down a bunch. There we go. So on this model, I'm going to do all of the armor. Balthazar Gold. Alright, next up we're going to do bolt gun metal. Okay, last bit is a flesh tone, which I'm just going to use, she's going to be kind of pale, so I'm just going to use elf flesh. Just a touch of white in each eye. I'm doing the shading part right now, which is putting this uh, wash onto all the metal bits. And then I'm going to have to wait a little bit for it to dry, and then I need to do the face, actually I can probably do the face while this is drying because it's not exactly touching. As soon as I was finished with the Nuln Oil, I started in on an Army Painter soft tone wash just on the face of the model. Everything else would be done with the sepia tone afterwards. As you can see, after the Nuln Oil had dried, it really darkened down all the metallic bits. That's okay, we are gonna go back later and do a little bit of highlighting to touch that up and brighten it back up a little bit. In the meantime, the next step is to get on the Seraphim Sepia Wash onto all of the leather and red cloth bits. I think a few more touch-ups to the uh, bronze is in order. The Balthazar.
then I'm just gonna pop out a few details in the silver metallic. So this is pretty much what she's gonna look like. And I really, really like it. I really like it. She is sharp. Oh yeah. After putting a uh, matte varnish on the model and getting it all sealed, the next thing to do is to glue the bubble helm into place. And I did that just with a little bit of super glue. And you want to be really careful of this so that you don't uh, use too much super glue and cause the clear plastic to fog up from the uh, processing of the super glue. That can really happen with these clear hard plastics and this kind of glue. So you want to use the absolute minimum. And I did my best to put it around the outside of where the... Um, bubble fits down into the collar of the helmet that way all the reaction and the fumes would be on the outside of the helmet if possible and next up we'll work on getting her put on her base so to get the model on her base the first thing i do is i take my pin vise and i drill a hole into one of her feet that'll fit a paper clip into it. And I ended up framing this poorly on the camera and I apologize for that. Especially with the pin vise, it was a little bit more of a task than I had anticipated it being. So uh, it took me a little bit to kind of poke a pilot hole in with the uh, hobby knife I had handy. And then I just used my pin vise to drill that, uh, drill into the foot and I just went in I didn't need to go in very far, you really don't. It just needs to be enough to give the uh, paper clip something to sit down into. So I do that off camera and then I'll do the same thing through the base. And once that's done, I'll just uh, bend the paper clip so it fits against the underside of the base inside the uh, rim of the base and glue it all down. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed these models and the paint scheme as much as I have. Uh, like I said, they're really high quality metal and occasionally resin models. Uh, you can also join their, their Patreon for monthly STL files if you happen to have a 3D printer. Uh, they do a monthly theme and it's a really cool thing. And the guys over there at Bombshell are fantastic. They're great to work with. The models are fantastic. I, I can't recommend them enough. Uh, their metal models especially have a great amount of detail and relatively low fuss as far as the um, flash and everything goes. They're really good high quality minis. And they have some amazing different sculpts that you can get a number of different tropes and genres. Uh, my current favorite, like I said, is the uh, retro futurism, Ray Punk sort of vibe. The, Like I said, the pulp sci-fi. I'm, I'm really digging on those lately. So be sure to check them out at their, uh, their website at the link below. I'll have the link to their Patreon as well. And be sure to check out their game Counter Blast while you're there on, the, uh, on their site. It's... Uh, entirely sort of a pulp sci-fi themed game. It's really cool. There's a lot of different factions for it that are really neat. So definitely check that out while you're on there. And thanks very much to the guys at Bombshell Miniatures for letting us use their models in our games and in our videos. I'm looking forward to including a, a bunch of their models in our core book, which we've been working on. Uh, that's kind of what's been going on predominantly behind the scenes lately. Like I said last time, as we've been working towards getting the book published, so that's still, still the most work that we're putting in right now is going towards that. Um, I do have stuff that I'm working on for the Patreon next month, which also ties into the core book. I'm working on solo play rules. And next month's Patreon is going to be all about that. It's going to be a short story leading up to uh, a group getting caught in a crossfire between two other groups. And the player will play as the group caught in the middle of the crossfire, trying to achieve their objective and survive the total chaos of the battlefield. So be sure to check us out on Patreon for that. You can also support us by checking out our Buy Me A Coffee. You tip us a couple bucks to buy cups of coffee. It goes a long way and makes us happy. So if you enjoyed this video and you liked the product review we did for Bombshell, 
be sure to hit the like button. Uh, also be sure to share and spread the word about these great models and about Clock Tower Game Studios. Uh, be sure to subscribe to us and hit the bell notification button down there so you'll make sure you catch all of our future uploads. Uh, we've got a couple more hobby videos coming down the line for terrain and some more uh, in-depth looks at the Game Seer that we're working on. So be sure to check that out. Thank you guys very much for watching. And remember, at the Clock Tower, it's always game time.